don't have a full conclusion of understanding, I guess, totally, but we are trying to figure this out. And one thing we do know is that it does not look like we're going to get a verdict at all this week. Um, so we're not looking to get a verdict, it looks like, right now until possibly next week. The jurors are thinking about going home today at 1 o'clock. We'll know here shortly if they're going to go home and uh, reconvene here to start deliberating again on Monday morning is what we're being told. And um, they got a lot of work ahead of them, a lot of things to decide. And um, the question was uh, this morning, I'll let Andrea kind of go over these questions. She's sitting in the courtroom and writing these all down. So um, hopefully we can explain this to you. So the questions are actually under seal so we don't get to, to hear what the actual question is. But they said the first question um, indicated there's a contradiction um, in the jury instruction and the jury form. Um, and I believe that it, it goes to the conspiracy. And it lists the obje objects of the conspiracy and what if they cannot find unanim unanimously that um, they agree on those. Uh, the judge then tells us that she thinks that its wording is the uh, confusion because the conspiracy is, has to be an agreement between two or more persons. But those two or more persons do not have to be any of the six defendants inside. So upstairs they have to find that there is a conspiracy first because if they find that there is not a conspiracy, if they cannot unanimously agree, um, and I believe the first count of conspiracy has six different elements and the second only has two, and if they cannot find uh, unanimously that they agree on any of those counts, then there is no conspiracy, and therefore nobody can be guilty of anything. So first they have to find that there is a conspiracy, and I think she was saying that their confusion is there can, the conspiracy can be with people who are not in the courtroom. Now this is huge because they're pretty much putting people on trial that are not upstairs to defend themselves. Did you want to speak on that for a minute? Yeah, so we've got guys uh, that are sitting in jail for the last 414 days a day that haven't even been in trial here that are on trial by the jurors. They uh, are saying that you can find that there's a conspiracy on what little evidence we give you, what little exhibits we gave you on other people that were there in the wash, were there that day on the 12th of April, three years ago. So if you could find that these other people committed a conspiracy, that can apply to these six defendants up here. So first, you have to find that there's a conspiracy. And if you can find there's a conspiracy outside of these six guys, you can, can, you can implement these six guys in that conspiracy. And that's a big task for the jurors to do. There's no way possible. You cannot have a conspiracy with people that has not even been convicted or even had a trial yet. And that's what this court is doing here today. What's the use of prejudice? There are also, their jury instructions are 15 pages long and their verdict form is 11 pages. So they're sitting up there with 26 pages um, trying to decipher everything and they're finding that there's contradiction in all of this and that's what where they're having their issues um, it's it looks to be confusing and I don't see how they can find a conspiracy when the people who supposedly conspired together aren't never testified they didn't have that evidence against them in the courtroom so it's it's confusing to me and it's also confusing to me if they find the conspiracy here does that mean the next trial jurors don't have to find that conspiracy and that goes into the next one this is all questions that i don't have the answer to so we're left sort of confused probably more confused or just as confused as the jurors up here the jurors are definitely confused they had a question after this is the fifth day of deliberation they have this question after these five days is there a conspiracy and trying to figure out this question one of the questions in the indictment is persons that committed a conspiracy not um, not a defendant um, that committed conspiracy conspiracy is persons so that can it's so broad uh, these defendants are not in that indictment necessarily it's persons in the indictment is how it's worded and they're going to try to find a conspiracy with persons outside, again, outside the defendants here. So 
Um, we're still trying to wrap our minds totally around it and try to figure out what exactly said. And a lot of this was sealed, so we really don't know exactly the wording of the questions that the jurors had. But the jurors did come into the room uh, briefly, and um, the judge and them explained to them the best they could on what to answer that question. And the jurors then made a note that they wanted to leave at 1 o'clock today. Um, we're going to get an answer on that just soon, whether they do leave or not. They're not planning on possibly coming back tomorrow. Um, she didn't say that. She said that it's up to them up to if them. they come back tomorrow or not. We will not know the answer to that until we find out if they are leaving today at 1, if they're coming back tomorrow. Right now, the jury is allowed to make their own schedule. So most likely if they ask to leave today at 1, they're going to leave today at 1. It'll be up in the air if they come back tomorrow or not. So we'll try to have you some more updates as soon as we can on this and uh, try to figure out exactly what's happening. We're just as much in the dark down here. Um, we're just waiting on answers from the court ourselves. So if we can find out anything of importance, you guys will be the first ones to know too. And uh, we'll give you another update. And um, we don't know what time that may be at this time. So can we, can we get everybody to type in not guilty? Just flood it. Not guilty. Keep not praying. guilty. Not guilty. Type in guilty. not guilty. That's what we want. We can see that these jurors have a lot of questions, and uh, we're thankful for that, that it's taken them this long to find out the truth. There was not enough evidence presented in this case. Um, it was all kept out of the case. Uh, not enough uh, exhibits. The government had over 500,000 exhibits just off of Facebook, and we got the peek at just a few of those. And defendants and their lawyers tried to um, bring a lot of this in and the government objected and they said that this evidence um, wasn't necessary. So, again, any more questions there? Awesome, everybody's responding yeah, not guilty. We get the, the vibration guilty. going out there. Everybody thinks awesome. it, everybody prays it, everybody talks it. We just have an alternate here. Looking at an alternate juror. Alternate juror, he's looking at the signs. And I went over and talked to him. We had a nice little talk. I told him what happened in Oregon, you know, and I said, I said, something similar seems to be happening at this time. And I said, we had, you know, seven defendants, 13 charges, no convictions. I said, because, and I'm the one speaking at this time. I said, how do you get into the minds of people and, and come up with conspiracy? He goes, that is the issue right there. Now, he was not on any of the deliberations. Keep that in mind. But this is his own thinking. How do you get in the minds of people? Know the intents of their nope. hearts. Yeah, know the intents of their heart. That's, and I'm willing to bet that's what, well, obviously that's what's happening right now too. Yeah. It'd definitely be a lot easier for a juror to, to determine that their so hearts awesome. were good than uh, that they were conspiring for evil. That's the second juror that we know that was on this case uh, as a alternate juror that has been down here in the last couple of days. And they're definitely they are um, curious of what's going on. They watch this case for weeks and weeks go on. And um, so that's a second juror that has came down here to see what's going on for themselves and is curious of knowing what's gonna, the outcome of this is gonna be. So I feel really good about this um, case. I know that uh, we're all waiting anxiously for what's gonna happen. But as long as this is happening, uh, with the jurors taking this long, I believe a truthful outcome is going to come of it, and we're going to get a not guilty for these guys, because that's exactly what we're praying for, and uh, we know God is good, and He's going to give us this not guilty. So awesome! Same thing happened in Oregon in the first trial. The jurors really uh, dug into it, and they found out the truth there. So good news. Awesome. Could you could you show us these new signs real so quick? So we got a bunch of signs. We've got quite a few people out here today. And, um, they're kind of in the shadows right now this morning, but we had these over in Portland, Oregon. And um, through the last trial, they are awesome signs. Release our ranchers and cowboys. Look at that heart, guys. Send some hearts. No BLM, no EPA. But, um, we've got um, another one here, whatever it takes over here. Sign. Our jury notification sign. We, we hung these signs up yesterday 
not knowing if they was going to allow us to attach them to the trees. And after a couple of hours of uh, Homeland Security coming through and looking at them, they finally sent a Homeland Security rig through and the Homeland Security people stopped in the road and they talked to several of us and told us that they were going to allow it, that the landlord of this property, that uh, the only thing they were concerned about is that, um, that we didn't attach any nails into the trees. So we assured them that we were not going to um, nail them up or fasten them that way, that we were not damaging the trees. So they gave us um, lead way there and they're allowing us to do it without trying to make us take it down. We had somewhere close to 40 plus people yesterday. Down here today, there's probably close to 30 of us. So we've got a good crowd out here to get today. We may not be in court tomorrow. We don't know yet. Um, we're just hoping to, I'm, I'm hoping the jurors do stay tomorrow myself because we I think we could get an answer this week if they could actually deliberate one more day with the questions they had the day but uh, we do not know at this time hopefully about one o'clock we'll know if they're going to stay go home come back tomorrow or be back Monday but uh, this is a shirt I actually wore in Portland Oregon for the first not guilty trial Ammon Bundy not was always guilty. always wearing a shirt similar to this jail scrubs and I got political prisoner on the back and um, I wore this uh, day after day down there during the first trial. So, um, see that hat too. In the hat here. This hat right here, people. And one other thing you can Google. Eric Parker. Google. <laughs> He's our hero. Bunkerville, Nevada. Just Google that on your phone. Eric Parker and uh, him being on that bridge, it's kind of amazing. That's when you Google Bunkerville, Nevada. That comes up on Google, Eric Parker's picture does. And it doesn't matter where you're at, it uh, comes up on uh, the Google search engine. So that's pretty interesting. Google that after a while, anybody who can, and just take a look at that and read that article that's under the Google search engine there. I guess that's all we have for you, unless there's any more questions today. We will um, sign off for now. But we'll, any time, as soon as we get the first bit of news down here, we'll be back on here and let you know what's going on.